Welcome to a Browse Company presentation demonstrating the use of the Unitronics Remote Operator Utility. Remote Operator allows the user to access the screens of a Unitronics PLC from a remote location. This can be accomplished via serial ports, uh, using a telephone or GSM modem, or through an Ethernet port that's an additional component to the PLC. For this demonstration, we will be using the Ethernet port. Here we have the Unitronics V570 PLC and an Animatic Smart Motor. The Smart Motor is an integrated package that has the motor's uh, controller, uh, power, power distribution, and everything contained in the motor itself. So we're going to stream information via that serial port to make this motor respond. So we'll go ahead and hook that motor to serial port number two. And then we'll go ahead and hook the Ethernet port to the Braz local area network on port 3. Now that we have that all connected up, uh, the PLC program itself is uh, going to allow an operator to uh, set a motor's position and it can also set the motor's speed and instruct the motor to perform homing sequences, absolute moves or incremental moves via push button. So right now the screen is on the opening screen, there's just some information about the Braz company. If I touch the Braz logo, that brings us to the motor operational screen. Notice we have an indicator that the motor right now is off in red here. So as soon as we tell the motor to do something, we should see that go green, saying that the motor's come alive. So when I push the home, home uh, motor push button, we should see a green light, and also the shaft of that motor should rotate. In order to enact an absolute mode uh, move, there's a push button called absolute move. We'll hit that and notice that the motor rotates a certain amount of rotations given by a parameter from the display. We can also increment an incremental move by pushing the incremental button, relative move button. To change the distance, keypad can pop up. We can enter a number or we can change the speed by hitting the speed window and get a different speed. Now that we've seen how we would do it locally via an operator, let's go ahead and show how to perform the same function using remote operator. Okay, first off, before we can uh, go into the remote operator utility, we have to make sure that VisiLogic is set up to communicate the uh, Ethernet port. We're going to take a look at right now are the building blocks of setting up the Ethernet port. Notice in network one, on power up, we're going to set a PLC name. We also have a TCP IP card initialization, and we will also initialize a socket over TCP IP. So the PLC name function block, simply type in the name you want to call your uh, your PLC, and in this case it's called Braz. In order to set the IP address of the system, we do the TCP card init. Let me open that up. Notice in this function block, you have the IP address. You also define the subnet mask and the default gateway to the network. The network will also need to know which socket we're going to communicate over for that remote connection. In this case, we've assigned local port 20256. Okay, the next step is to uh, configure the remote operator to communicate to the Ethernet port on the PLC. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the communication settings icon, which brings up the settings uh, box. And notice here is set for serial. We're going to change that to Ethernet. And we'll type in the PLC's IP address, which is 192.168.112.50. Here's the port that we had signed in the PLC, 2256. And then the protocol, which was also set up in, set up in the uh, port function box to UDP. And we need to type in the PLC's name, which was Braz. And once we have those settings, we can check the connection to make sure we're communicating by hit the check connection block, block or button. 
And notice that when it establishes the communications, we get our PLC model and some other information showing us that we're connected to the PLC at that point. So that affirms that our communication settings are correct. So I'll go ahead and close that box. Once we have that set up, if you notice when we were looking at the PLC, there were some graphics. In order for a remote operator to show those graphic, uh, those, uh, graphic files, we need to create a cache file. So next to the communication settings icon is a cache file icon. And we're going to go ahead and create a cache file. Which in order to do that, we need to go ahead and set a file name. And I'll just type in a name for now, which is test. Once you have a file name, hit the next button. And if you can communicate with the PLC, it's going to go out, to the remote operator will go out and check and uh, grab whatever graphics are involved with that PLC. So we get a progress bar showing that it's creating the file. It's reading the images right now. And once that is done, our finish uh, button turned on. So now we can say finish. And that uh, cache file is now created. So once we have that all, all, all accomplished, notice that along the top there's a run button icon. If we push that, it should, the system should go out and try to locate the PLC that was defined in that setup. And notice now we are connected to the PLC. We can see the same screen that we saw when we were an operator. Uh, notice that remote operator also puts up uh, the bezel of the connected PLC, showing that it is indeed a V570. If we don't want to see this frame, there is an icon which will show or hide that case. And then we can see more, uh, uh, more of the screen setting. So I'll go ahead and put the case back on. And uh, let's demonstrate uh, pushing the buttons now from remote operator. So here's our home motor button. I'm going to push that. Notice the green light came on and the actual position of the motor changed to zero. If we can make that absolute move, I'll push that. Notice that indents. And we can see that our motor is moving by the actual position display. I'll do that again using the, re the relative move push button. And again we see that our motor position is changing. Okay, we've switched back over to the PLC and smart motor uh, combination so that we can watch the uh, action by using the remote operator utility. So first off I'll go ahead and home the smart motor. If you notice the motor rotated and our actual position changed to zero. I'll tell the system to run an absolute move. And we should see that our motor rotates, positions being updated, uh, motor rotating. We'll do that again doing a relative move. to verify that yes we are actually operating the motor and let's go ahead and change the motor speed as well or the motor's position rather type in some new numbers and do an absolute move notice that we're going back now to 10 revolutions, we typed in 20,000, 2,000 pulses per rev, give us 10 revs. Okay, as you saw, we uh, connected and ran the PLC from our remote connection over our local area network. In order to uh, gain access to the PLC over our global network, what we'll do is have our IT department set the local uh, port number that we assigned in our program to the global connection and then go back into remote operator and reconfigure it for that global address. So I've clicked on the communication settings icon, changed the IP address to the global address. Check our connection. Notice that our PLC information comes up as it did before. 
and we're ready to go. In closing, we've experienced running remote operator, uh, taking control of our PLC, causing our motor to rotate. In the real world, a machine builder or a user would be able to access screens of their PLC, which can show information such as alarms, operating modes, measurements, uh, so forth, which you can gain and, and utilize uh, from that remote operation. Uh, and furthermore, once you do have a remote connection to the PLC, you can also get access to the PLC itself, its programs, using the VisiLogic software. And uh, we'll show that in another module, plus uh, some other information on the Animatic Smart Motor. And have a good day.